everyone, here is my sewing tutorial for the pattern Creations by Mache number 131. It is a simple little dress that lends many different embellishment options and as always all the materials as well as time stamps for all the steps for this garment will be linked in the description box below. So to get started you'll have the yoke front and you'll cut two of these on the fold and the same thing with the yoke back, two of those on the fold as well. Then you'll have two sleeves and I like to mark my sleeves with two notches at the back, one at the center and another Another notch at the front of the sleeve and I also mark one notch at each of those dots on the bottom of the sleeve so I know where to get the sleeve and I'll explain more on this later on and then finally you will have your skirt pieces and you have the freedom to kind of alter the dimensions of the skirt from the pattern with very little effort it's just a rectangle so so basically if you just wanted a fuller skirt you can make it wider or longer or whatever fits your little one. So to get those yoke pieces together, start by putting one yoke front right sides together with a yoke back and sewing along the shoulder seam. Remember the seam allowance for this pattern is 5 eighths of an inch, which may be easier to remember if you're coming from the adult garment land, but this is a little unusual in baby land, so here is your friendly reminder. 5 eighths of an inch. And you'll just continue joining these pieces together in an alternating manner. You know, one yoke front, to a yoke back, to a yoke front, to a yoke back, and this will give you a ring of yokes, <laughs> if you will. If you are going to attach a collar, go ahead and do that now with the yoke ring open like this, so the collar just goes through one layer of fabric. And regardless of a collar addition or not, you'll put the yoke fronts together, like with right sides together, which will fold the back yokes onto themselves like this. And I like to pin at the shoulder seams to keep them in line. And then you can take that back to your machine and sew around the neckline. And just a little tip, if you leave a tiny space at the back edge, I mean tiny little space, this will allow that point somewhere to go. It'll allow that fabric a little bit more space to go into, which will be a sharper point. Anywho, you can trim up that seam allowance and put little clips around the curve of the neckline so everything lays nice and flat. And finally, I take this little pointy tool and push those points out before giving everything a really good ironing. The last thing I do to the yoke is understitch that top neckline seam. And if you are unfamiliar, to simply put it, you'll put the entire seam to the lining side of the yoke. And then you'll stitch that seam to the lining. And this little step helps to keep the lining from kind of peeking out when the garment is being worn. You can skip it if you want to, but it's just a little nice technique, like I said, to keep the lining from peeking out as the garment's being worn. And now you can put the yoke aside and move on to the skirt. And I take the skirt front and I put two rows of gather stitches at the top. You want one row of gather stitches on either side of where your seam allowance is. And the benefit of having two rows of gather stitches is that your gathers won't go crooked on you when you sew your permanent seam. So I gather up my skirt front and then pin one side to the yoke front, leaving that lining out of course, and then pin the other side together. From there I adjust the gathers and the length of the skirt front until it matches the yoke front. And then I took it to my machine and sewed the two together. And after that I removed the visible gather thread and gave the seam an ironing. I'm ironing the entire seam towards the yoke since the yoke lining will get hand sewn in place later on using those machine stitches and I will explain more in a later clip. So I kind of rinse and repeat for the skirt back except this time you're going to have to put a placket in the back first. So I put the sides of the skirt back together and then iron that in half and that gives me a crease at the center back. It's just a, an easy way to find that center back and I cut along this crease. And after ripping a two inch strip from a scrap of this dress fabric I install the placket and I have a detailed video linked below on how to do this. So when I gather the back of the skirt, I make sure the right side of the plaque is folded under since the right side will go on top of the left side with girl's garments. And then I gather that side of the skirt back to the right side of the yoke back. And I pin the two together with right sides together, again making sure the lining is left out of this seam. And you'll line up the edge of the skirt with the crease of that yoke back. And after you sew that in place, you'll repeat the same thing to the left side of the dress, but this time you'll have the placket just laying flat. You don't need to fold it under since this is going to be the underneath of the placket. I hope all that makes sense. <laughs> 
then you'll give everything an ironing and iron those bottom edges of the lining under. Like I mentioned before, these edges will get hand sewn in place using the machine stitches. And if you've seen my videos before, you know I like to save all this hand sewing until the end. So for now, I'm just going to pin them in place and then take them to my machine to baste everything together. And finally, you can move on to the sleeves. And there are many variations you can do when it comes to embellishing these sleeves. On this dress, I only put two rows of gather stitches from the front of the sleeve to the back of the sleeve. But on this dress, I put two rows of gather stitches along the bottom of the sleeve between those dots that I mentioned in the beginning when I was talking about the pattern pieces. And that allows me to gather at the bottom of the sleeve and then attach this little band of fabric. It's all up to you. As I say, it's sewing, you do you. There are many, many, many different options. But instead of gathering the bottom of this sleeve, I attach the lace and I have a detailed video on how to attach lace to fabric that I will link below. And now this lace comes assembled as you see here with the lace insertion attached to the beading lace and then attached to the edging lace. And I will use the beading lace to run a piece of ribbon through later on and that will be how like that sleeve gets gathered at the bottom. Anywho, once you're done embellishing and gathering your sleeve, adjust the gather so they match the armhole area. So I like to pin one side and then the other side and then I find the center using that notch from before and I match that to the shoulder seam and then from there I just adjust the gathers and the length until everything fits. So after sewing the sleeve to the dress, I trimmed up the seam and went over it with a zigzag. And yes, you could do this whole step with a serger instead if you wish. Then I attach one side of the dress using French seams and I have a detailed video on how to do those that is linked below. Okay, and since I'm doing a lace hem, I attach the lace to the hem first before sewing the other side seam together. And this allows the raw edges of the lace to be enclosed by that second French side seam. And if you're just doing a deep hem, you're not doing any lace on the hem, you can do both French seams, side seams first, and then hem your dress. But anywho, here is my finished dress after I was done with my hand sewing and embroidery work, and I put buttons on the back. And this is Audrey's fancy Easter dress this year. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and hope to catch y'all next time.